What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a little book on haul. Boyfriend and I are moving into a new unit, um, into a two bedroom instead of a one bedroom which we are currently in um, within our same apartment complex next week will probably already be moved by the time this video goes up I wanted to clear some space on the shelves because of this reading around the world challenge that I'm doing I end up thrifting a lot of books um, and so I've just started to notice that the shelves are a little bit full I've got um, a lot of stacks that are they're kind of like double stacks which this bookshelf is really unique because it's like a 360 degree type shelf um, I will link it below it's from world market not sponsored but I do really love the shelf if any of you have been in the market for a new bookshelf the stacks that I have that I have cleared basically means that I can put them up on Amazon, eBay, whatever, um, and hopefully maybe sell them by the time, like before we actually move, um, so that it's one less thing to take to the new apartment. So here's the other stack. Quite a few things in here. There are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 books. 20 books um, that I'm unhauling. Now this doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy them. Some of them, maybe they were like a gift or something, um, and it's just not something that I would actually read. I have so many things on my TBR now because of this reading around the world challenge. It's kind of insane. <laughs> so some of them um, I have read, but like know that I'm not gonna reread. Some of them I bought years ago. Like I don't even remember when or where I bought them from. But the whole point of doing this video is hopefully like you guys can actually get some, maybe some book recommendations, even if I haven't read them. Maybe it's something you just haven't seen before. So I'm gonna start with a few that are actually boyfriends. I haven't gotten his permission yet to sell them. So these may go back on the shelf, but I'm gonna leave them out in a little stack for him to peruse and kind of look at so that he can decide whether we're gonna keep them or not. The first one is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I wanna say this is one that we actually read together. That was like one of the cute little things we would do <laughs> when we were dating and I would like go over to his place as we would read like children's books. We would sometimes read like a chapter and pass it back and forth or we'd each read a page and then pass it back and forth. I just feel like it's not gonna be one that we pick up again. Another one that we read together was The Richest Man in Babylon. We actually did get a few little nuggets of wisdom um, about like financial financial advice out of this. This is by George S. Clayson, but we're definitely not gonna reread it. Um, so I will put this on his stack to decide whether or not he thinks he might flip back through it one day. Another one that he, I think he started but didn't finish, How to Think Like a Fish. This is Jeremy Wade's um, memoir. Is it a memoir? And Other Lessons from a Lifetime in Angling. Yeah, so it's basically like Jeremy Wade's memoir. He's the um, River Monsters guy. If you've never seen him before, that's him. Um, he's got that show on, is it like the Discovery Channel? No, Animal Planet. It was one of the most watched, most successful programs in Animal Planet's history. So that's kind of interesting. So if he's not gonna finish it, this will be one that we can sell. Another one that we tried reading together, I feel like so bad mentioning this in a negative light because I loved this the first time that I read it, which was like years ago, I don't even remember. It's Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I don't know, something about, it's just maybe not a great one to read together out loud um, because there's so much in the beginning there, so many specifics, so many numbers and things with you know, the test tubes going back and forth on the conveyor belts. And, you know, I think the ideas in it are great, but I feel like it's just not a great read aloud. <laughs> it's not one that we enjoyed passing back and forth. We just like, eventually we just put it down. It's, it's definitely one that you're just gonna wanna like listen to or read on your own. Um, so it just wasn't a great buddy read we found for whatever reason. One that we got for or two that we actually got for, um, I want to say these were like Christmas presents, so I feel kind of bad, but they're just not the type of books that we're probably ever going to read. So this is Brian Kilmeade's The President and the Freedom Fighter. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's a lot of important information in here about history. It's Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and their battle to save America's soul. We just don't read history books like this. Now we love like Killers of the Flower Moon, and we're excited to like see the film and everything. Like that's like a history book that I really loved. It kind of reads like fiction. And maybe this does too, I don't know, but it's just not, I just know I'm not going to pick it up. It is not the kind of book that I, that I gravitate towards at all. Um, so this will probably be going. And then also Badass Habits by Jen Sincero. I read 
recently, Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I really liked. I assume this is probably kind of similar because it's about habits. So I kind of feel like it might be a little bit redundant. I'm sure it's different, but like, I just feel like it might be a little bit redundant. So this one's probably gonna go as well. So those are all of the ones. Those are the four, five, six that I'm going to um, make sure that he's okay with me selling. Um, that we, you know, that were sort of like ours or his. I'll also talk about um, Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. This is a phenomenal book. I feel like every single person on the planet should read this book. Definitely take this one as like a recommendation from me for sure. But we have our own copy that we've, I think we've both read. I know I've read it. Maybe he hasn't read it. That I love and it's like marked up and highlighted. That's the one I'm going to keep. This one, I don't even remember why. Like it still has the tag on it. I don't know if I was like gifting this to him so he could have his own copy that was separate from mine. Or I think maybe the idea was that I would hang on to it and then gift it to somebody one day because I loved it so much. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should hang on to it. And I was kind of thinking that's what this video might do is like, I was going to talk myself into keeping some of these. Maybe I, um, I don't know. Maybe I will sell this one. We'll put it, we'll put it back out into the world for somebody else to enjoy. Okay, so 10 of them. Oh, can I not drop it? 10 of them I have read. And no, I'm not going to reread. I either enjoyed them but and I'm just not a rereader um or yeah I just feel like they weren't they weren't for me they're not really they don't necessarily need to be taking up space on my shelf the first one is truly phenomenal now it is it is a lot to take in um it's a lot of information it's basically the whole entire book is like an information dump um but it's the omnivore's dilemma by michael pollan this is phenomenal i will say the first like 100 pages no joke he's just talking about corn um because corn is such a basis for so many things agriculturally i still have my notes from this like all the little tabs i've, I've already taken notes on they're in my book journal so i will have the notes from it it's just so it's dense there's a lot in here and I don't think that I would ever reread it um, but the ins like the amount and like depth of research that he did for this book is like kind of crazy he very much took it in like a boots on the ground type of style um, like he was he was on the farms he was like he was in the forest foraging like he was truly in it basically he was on the hunt for like how to create like the like the perfect well-balanced meal that he had completely grown or hunted for or foraged for himself. But just know that it's gonna be kind of dense. It was definitely not the most thrilling read. It's very informative, so it's, it is it is a little bit boring at times. Um, but anyway, I know I'm not gonna reread it, so that one's gonna go. Then Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrent is next. Um, I was reading this one either just before or while we were in Georgia. This was like my Georgia read. Whenever we travel, I try to find a book that's like somehow sort of related to where we're going. We're heading to Florida in the next couple of months, like after after Christmas, I think, sometime in the new year. And so I'll be reading, I think we're both gonna take a Hemingway book and visit um, Ernest Hemingway's house. So anyway, the whole time I was thinking it was like a fictional story. Like it feels very much like you're reading like Clue or something like that. It's, it's kind of like a whodunit. Because of like the, the rich descriptions, like the character descriptions, I would say if you like rich character description, this is gonna be one that you really like. Each chapter sort of feels like it's chronicling the, the life of a person, like a local Georgian. Yes, I thought it was interesting. It didn't really have my attention the entire time because it was like all of part one, like the entire first half is just so focused on the people and there wasn't a lot of plot. So like plot comes in stronger in part two um anyway so it's just not one that i'm gonna reread so that one's going next was a short story collection i'd had this on my tbr for so so long i think i read this over the summer um, milk blood heat by dantel w moniz i think i'm saying her name right and it was just it fell a little flat for me i mean it as with any short story collection, there's gonna be hits and misses. You like some, you don't like others. Um, it takes place in Florida. So this would be a fun one if you are planning a trip to Florida like we are. So it was not it was not a five star for me. Um, so I know it's not one that I'm gonna reread. Next is another author who they write very well, like their prose style is lovely. And I know she's quite well known and well loved. Um, so this is gonna be an unpopular opinion. She's like an international best-selling author, but Elena um, Ferrante, I think that's how you say your name. This is The Lying Life of Adults. I love 
love, truly love a good coming of age story. And that's what, that's what this is. Um, I was kind of hoping for something maybe sort of in the same vein as Call Me By Your Name. Um, maybe there's just not a book that's gonna ever live up to Call Me By Your Name, I don't know. But this is set in Naples um, and we're following a 14 year old girl named, named Giovanna. And it's all about like her discovering things about herself, her friends, boys for the first time, very much like a traditional coming of age. But I don't know, there was just something about it that fell a little flat for me. I just was not hooked. I was not hooked. I would read Ferrante again um, to try to see if there's maybe just another novel that I would like more than this one. I don't know, it just didn't hit the spot, you know? So anyway, that one's going. Next up is The Way Spring Arrives and Other Stories. This is um, female and non-binary authors um, and it's Chinese, Chinese science fiction. So it's a Chinese science fiction and fantasy short story collection, um, obviously translated into English. There were some really good nuggets in here. Again, you're gonna like some and you're gonna not like others. So that's the reason why I'm getting rid of it. I just didn't, I didn't love every single one of them. I thought some of them were super creative and like way out there. Like in the description it says, you can dine at a restaurant at the end of the universe, watch roses perform Shakespeare, or arrive at the island of the gods on the backs of giant fish to ensure that the world can bloom. There was a couple essays in there. Actually, there was one of them. That was one of my favorite things was there was an essay that was so good about like female Chinese writers trying to bust out into the science fiction fantasy genre. They would have to like change their names sometimes in order to get published somewhere. Oh no, here it's called. Net novels and the Xi era, how internet novels opened the door for female readers and writers in China. Um, I think I enjoyed that essay more than I enjoyed the stories themselves. So that's definitely one to check out if you pick this up. Next was Get In Trouble by Kelly Link. Um, again, this is one that I, I've had like saved on Pinterest on my to be read board for a really long time. And I don't even think like there's not a single tab in here. So I think like it just didn't resonate with me. Like there was nothing that I need. I felt like I wanted to mark up nothing that I just felt like, you know, was like super interesting, I guess. This is also a short story collection. There are nine stories in here. And I remember a few tiny little details, um, but most of what these were about escapes me because nothing just reached out and grabbed me. So I would give Kelly Link another chance though, um, for sure. Like if she's got, I, mean, I know she has other stuff out there. So I just need to see what else she has and maybe I would like those things more. The last couple that I have to mention are ones that I generally did enjoy. Um, I just know I'm not gonna reread. So my year of rest and relaxation, by Otessa Moshevik. I just recently mentioned this actually because I read Lapfina, um, which is another one of her novels that I loved. It takes place in medieval times. It's much darker than this. This is like, I think I was saying in that video, it kind of encapsulates the millennial mental health struggle. So if you're wanting something like that, it is sort of relatable in that sense. So it was fun, but it's not gonna be a reread. Next is Black Girl Call Home Poems by Jasmine Manns. I think I'm saying her name right. Um, I've had this cover pinned for the longest time. I'm obsessed with this cover. I think it's so, so cool. I love all the colors and the barrettes. I think it's so, so cute. Um, this one is quite punchy. It's kind of a punch in the gut. There's a lot in here that's so true. Like if you're living a female experience, you're gonna be able to relate to a lot of things in here. I thought it was really great. She talks a lot about like the relationship with her mom in here. She talks a lot about like gender and like hypocrisy and just like male versus female. And yeah, she makes some really, some really interesting points and the poems are really, really accessible. Most of them are pretty short. And I do recommend this one, but I just know it's not one that I'm gonna probably reach for again. So that one's gonna be put up for sale. Another short story collection. Maybe this is like a trend that I need to like notice is that I'm not the biggest fan of short story collections. This is I'm Fine But You Appear To Be Sinking by Lena Crow, Lena Crow. This is one that I, the cover, the cover for sure is what got me. It's got this sort of like 50s resort vibe to it, but then we have like a little astronaut down here in the corner and then there's like a sea monster octopus friend coming up out of the, out of the lake. 
Um, but these are like science fiction short stories. One of the things that I thought was really interesting is Spud and Spud 2. This was like a recurring short story. So like you would read a couple pages and then it would move on to a different story or two and then you would come back to Spud and Spud 2 and it would be like time passed. So you have like one short story but that's like chunks of it are like spread throughout the entire book which I thought was kind of clever. I don't know that I've ever read another short story that does something quite like that. So these were okay. It wasn't a five star um, so I know I'm not going to pick it up again for that reason. And then finally on the ones that I have read but I'm not going to reread. Um, we have Lara Jean McKay's The Animals in That Country. I am obsessed with this cover. I would almost keep it just for the cover. I, I'm a sucker for like holographic um, font or like silver gold foil type fonts. If I was writing this story, I just would have taken it in a, in a totally different direction. I just wasn't quite expecting it to go the way that it did. Basically, a it's called the Zoo Flu um, and it's, it's kind of like instead of COVID, it's like the zoo flu. And all of a sudden people can hear the thoughts of animals. Um, and so our main character's name is Jean and she works at a zoo. And she basically ends up going on this like cross country trek. It's in Australia, it takes place in Australia. Um, and she ends up going through like the outback in search of her granddaughter, I believe, who's like gone missing. Um, a family member has taken her. There's like some family drama there. And Jean has her own stuff going on too. I wanna say she's borderline alcoholic. I think that's her thing. I do like that we're, we're seeing a, a female character with like a lot of flaws um, and seeing a very, like a real person. She does feel like a very real person, but it ended up being more about like her going and finding her daughter, her granddaughter, and less about, I think I wanted more explanation or more, not even just like the science behind it, behind the whole zoo flu thing, but I just feel like there could have been more interesting things happening with people being able to hear the thoughts of animals. Like, are you kidding me? You ask like any child and that's like the superpower that they're gonna say that they wish that they had. There was so much that could have been done with that. I'm not exactly sure what, but I just feel like that part was glanced over. We kind of glazed over that part. More of like a speculative vibe would have been really cool. Like this concept in the hands of like Jeff Vandermeer or somebody like that, I'd be all over that. Um, so it wasn't a five stars, but I did, I did enjoy it overall, but again, just not gonna reread it. And then the final three um, are ones that I have not read and I just, I keep them on the shelf and I keep them on the shelf and I keep them on the shelf. I feel like we all do that with books that we're like, oh, I'll get to it one day. One of those um, is a $2 radio book, which I love, I love them. Um, they publish, their whole like motto is like they publish books too loud to ignore, like really unique types of books. Um, I'll put on the screen right now some of the ones that they have published that I've read over the years that really did like knock me off my seat. They, they really do publish books that like a traditional publisher probably wouldn't even touch because they're a little bit left of center. Like the, they're just a little bit weird. They're a little bit different. So they, they do have some really, really good ones. And I have a few on my TBR that I would love to read. But this one is just one I've had on my shelf and I've had on my shelf and I've had on my shelf. And I just, I never pick it up. It's, um, it's like a zombie novel. There's like a zombie epidemic happening and then our main character discovers um, an unreturned movie envelope, smashed windows and a pool of blood in his father's house. And his dad has gone missing. And so he creates a list of his father's haunts and then asks uh, like a friend, I guess, to help track him down. Um, takes place in Baton Rouge. So this is probably really good. It's also got like so many footnotes. So like this is a footnote, this whole area right here. And then this as well, this whole side of the page is like a footnote. So it's like written, I don't, I don't know. That, I think that's one of the things that's like kept me from reading it too, is like, it looks confusing. Like it looks like, how do you even keep track of what you're reading? Because there's so many, like here's a footnote, this whole side of the page is a footnote. I've never been like super into like zombie stories or anything. I mean, I watched The Walking Dead. Um, I've seen I Am Legend. I read the book for I Am Legend. I forget what it was called as a book. And I liked all of those things, but I just don't know. I don't know. If you've read it and you really loved it and I'm missing out, leave me a comment and I'll keep this one. Um, but anyway, that's this one's probably going 
up for sale. Next one has a few tabs in it because I did actually start it, but it was a DNF, which I feel very guilty about because I'm aware that this is a classic. It won a freaking Nobel Prize, but I think there's just something about the pros. It's, it's gorgeous, but it's like very, in literature, ideally you wanna like, it's like show don't tell. That's like a very common literary piece of advice is show don't tell. Show us what's going on, don't tell us. And I feel like there was a lot of telling, um, but this is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, again, I feel really guilty. Um, I said I've forgiven myself. I really truly don't know that I have. This was supposed to be for Columbia for my reading around the world challenge because this is probably the most famous piece of literature to come out of Columbia ever. This book was just not for me. So I'm getting, as I get older, I'm forgiving myself for <laughs> not liking things that we as readers are told that we're supposed to like. I'm getting to a point where I'm like, it's okay to DNF it if I don't like it, even if a million people disagree with me and that's okay. And then lastly, we have one, it still looks super interesting to me. Maybe I should keep this one. Um, it's FKA USA by Reed King. So political satire, but obviously with like a science fiction-y dystopic sort of bent to it. So it takes place in 2085. The main character's name is Trucky. Um, and he he's thrust unexpectedly into the spotlight, trapped by the president for a sensitive political mission, deliver a talking goat across the continent. The fate of the world depends on it. Joined on the road by an android who wants to be human and a former convict lobotomized in the sovereign nation of Texas, Truckee will navigate an environmentally depleted and lawless continent. So the comparisons here are, it's like a cross between The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and The Road by Cormac McCarthy, which sounds actually really cool. I was not obsessed with The Hitchhiker's Guide because it just is so wacky and weird. And then I haven't read The Road because it just seems so dark and bleak. And I feel like it's gonna be a book that just makes me sad. But those two things together could be like magical. Um, maybe I should keep this one. Maybe I should. I mean, I have no intention to read it anytime soon. The cover reminds me of Ready Player One. That's what it reminds me of. The cover reminds me of Ready Player One. <laughs> maybe this is the one out of the stack that I'll put back. Because the whole android wanting to be a human part, that's really, I think that's the part that's gonna get me. So, okay, putting it on the shelf. But that is everything that I will be getting rid of. I hope you found some recommendations. Most of these are really very good. Um, and if I'm making any mistakes, let me know in the comments and I may put some of them back on my shelf. So you guys let me know, what are you reading in November? Like, what are you gonna finish out your year with? And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.